shall in no ways be entangled by God's wrath. He shall be kept. So if I go into the heavens, he knows. And if I go into the deepest depths, he knows. For no matter what may come my way, I'm covered by his blood. Even when Satan seems to rage by God's hand, I remain safe. I'm in his safe. Yeah.
Too big. 
to be a miracle. A miracle. A miracle. Ask. Believe. Receive. Your miracle is on the way. Your miracle is on the way. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Can, can't you see? doing it right now. He's 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 doing it right now.
of the service thus far. We praise and thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Right now, we're going to get our hearts and minds ready for the most important part of the service, and that is the word of God. Coming from the man of God, Elder Charles Shockley, would you please stand to your feet? Stretch your hands this way and say, preach the word. Preach the word. I'm ready. Man, I'm just letting the Lord talk to you for a minute. There's some things I can't answer for you, but 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 he's walking up and down the aisleways, and all you got to do is just reach out and touch him. We're going to leave a few minutes here just to reach out and touch the Lord. You know what that issue is. That's why you're looking for a miracle. You done ran out of everything you can do to fix this one. Say, God, wherever you meet me at, I need you right now. Right now. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. I can't wait another minute. Right now, Lord. I would move forward, but you can't leave out of here how you came in. You, you can't even wait till this sermon is over with. God said, I'm going to meet you right now. Right now. Amen. Lift your hands up just quickly. Say, Lord, right now I'm, I'm reaching out to you, God. Reach out and touch me right now, God. I've done everything I could. I done ran out of all of my solutions and my tricks. I need you right now. That's right. Get your breakthrough right now. Get your breakthrough right now. It's what you came here for. You came looking for Jesus. Amen. Now, don't get halfway pulled out of that thing. Let God pull you all the way out. He is the great physician. He heals all our infirmities. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. How pastor used to say, today's a good day to get the Holy Ghost. If you need a refilling, today's a good day to get refilled. Amen. I, I promise. I am trying to move on. But Jesus is walking up and down the highways. 
said, all you got to do is reach out and touch me. Why, why would you walk out with that problem that had you all frustrated all week long when you can hand it to him and walk out with Jesus in your hand? I'm going to try this again, Lord, help me. We, we honor God who's just in the building. Amen. We honor our great pastor, Pastor Julie Price. Amen. Amen. And Mother Jackson, our president of our minister staff. Amen. To my wife, Sister Shelley. We thank God. Man, you, you heard the testimony about the gun shootout in front of our house. I just prayed a brief prayer before I left out the, dri out the driveway and said, God, cover our house. That's the second time the Lord prompted the prayer to come out. Another time we was going on a trip and I said, God, just cover us. And immediately a car came and almost hit our car and would have tore it up. See, what God is saying to you today I'm trying to be uh, go through the format. So what God is saying to you today is the moment you whisper that prayer, the moment I prompt you to pray, the moment I prompt you to move, if you just do your part. So what God is saying, you handle my business, I handle yours. We ain't going to be long today. We got... We got a service tonight, amen, and we're just going to try and give you what God has given us, Whew. amen. If you would join us in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, in the 44th and 45th verse. to all you can that will stand to your feet and honor the word of God. Amen. This word will bring you out and it will keep you out. And it reads, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on that the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's read a little further. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus, and they prayed him to tarry certain days. Amen. We're going to use four thought. I don't know why the Lord is using this, but this is what he's saying. It's time. It's time. You may be seated. It's time. In the Roman regiment based in Caesarea, there was a centurion named Cornelius, a man who was such a sincere God-fearer 
that all his household followed his faith. We heard that testimony today. We want to be one who follows God and and they follow us. That's a good thing. Amen. Of all the influences that are out in the world today, all the things that we could model and imitate, the best thing is to be a God fearer. In response to his res- his expression of faith and acts of kindness, God promised to send Peter to tell him the good news of Jesus Christ by which he could be saved. It's important to hear the word. It's important to hear the word rightly divided. It's important to sit up under the word under a regular basis. I caution saying this, but none of us got dimensionally challenged because we went to McDonald's once a week. Did I say that tactfully in there? It's the same thing when you go to the gym. If you just go once a month, you're going to get once a month results. I was going to go to the gym, but the only machine I can work in there is the vending machine. So it's important that we hear the word on a regular basis. It's important to meditate on the word on a regular basis. Whatever you listen to, that's what's going to come out of you when you get squeezed in the pressure situation. It's just like vegetable soup. It can sit there and be cool, and all you'll see is the water. But let that heat hit it. Whatever's at the bottom is going to come to the top. You can't say a curse word slipped out. It just slipped out. It wasn't just no more room in there to come <laughs> stay in there. Yeah, I didn't mean to say that. that Maybe not, but it was in there. When you stump your finger, whatever you used to saying. So if Jesus don't come out, it didn't go in. That's the name, Lord. Now, God wanted to teach Peter a lesson. He gave him a vision to show him that the old Jewish food laws were of no further use to him. There was no longer distinction between clean food and unclean food. Therefore, Peter was free to eat all food. I probably don't need to hear that. While Peter was thinking about the meaning of this vision, God told him to go to Caesarea to meet the Roman Cornelius. Now, by the time Peter left, Uh, Cornelius had a vision also. And so God was talking to Peter, and he was talking to Cornelius. Now, this right here is where the Lord turned the lights on for me. See, because God is talking to some of us, and he's sending us to people, and we say, well, I can't talk to them kind of people. Well, why not? God is reaching out to everybody. It's his will that all be saved. All be saved. He don't want nobody to perish. And if you think about it, many of us have the same testimony. I'm sure they talked about me, even though I was a preacher's grandson. Ain't no way Jesus could do nothing with him. He is checked out. But God was already working with me. And God is working with them people that he's sending you to. And God is already talking to them. He's already breaking up that follow ground. And now he's sending you to go tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. And so while he was working on this here, God sent him there and had to get his mind right to be able to witness to Cornelius. After Cornelius welcomed him, Peter began his address. I want to read this for you out of the book, still chapter 10, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth. God sent you somewhere. You got to open your mouth. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. We can't, we can't be uh, CIA saints anymore. Can't be undercover anymore. You know, sometimes we just want to fit in. We don't want to.
cause no disturbance. Yeah, I love Jesus, you know, and you're doing your thing and I'm doing mine. We're called to be the salt of the earth, called to be a light. You're supposed to be different. That's why when you go places, people start not liking you, and they don't even know why. So I'll tell you why. If, if, if the Holy Ghost ain't in them and he's in you, there's going to be a b- battle. Because the enemy know when you walk into a place. He knows when you come in, you're going to influence that area for Christ. He can't, he can't handle that. He's already lost. Hell was not created for us. It was created for the devil and his angels. And this should alarm people because heaven is measured. Bishop used to say this all the time. Heaven is measured. You should read the measurements. It is mind-blowing. What's even more mind-blowing is that the Bible says that hell has enlarged itself and that without without measure. Now, please get this. The devil doesn't own hell. Uh-oh. He's got a short time. He knows he's lost, and he's taking everybody he can with them. That's why when you read the scripture, it says, if the righteous scarcely make it in, where should the ungodly and the sinner, those are two different groups. The ungodly is the ones who sit up under the word all the time and in their heart rebel against what's taught. Now that's deep right there, isn't it? They don't make a lot of noise, but in their heart, they're rejecting the word of God. So if we who are doing everything we can to be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, doing everything we can, where were those who ain't even trying going to stand? And so it's important that we hear the word of God. So he said he opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. But in every nation, he that fear of him and worketh, see that word right there, E-T-H, continually worketh righteousness, is accepted uh, with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him, and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. God, him, God raised up the third day and shewed him openly. It means he showed him openly. Not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. There's a lot of religions out there. Guarantee you, ain't none of them people that started that got back up. But he rose from the dead. They ate with him, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, through his name, we was coming to the Bible say we got the paper, what's in the name? That through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions, of sin. 
Now we come to the verse that they said, while Peter yet spake these words, while he gave them the gospel of Jesus Christ, while he told them about that hope that Mother Strauss preached about Wednesday night, while he was speaking that, he said, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. If you're hearing the word today, it's, it's time to make a decision. It's time to let God, I want to be filled, I mean filled up with the Holy Ghost. I want to be a dude with power. I want to be able to be a witness for you, God, that you are alive forevermore. I want to tell people that you're saving, you're delivering, that when you came into my life, my mind got right. I want to tell people that you healed me in the midnight hour. I want to tell people he's faster than a speeding bullet. I want to tell people that God saves, he delivers, he watches over us. Except the Lord builds a house. They that labor, labor in vain. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman, but watch in vain. Listen, when we sing that song, we got angels watching over us. That ain't just a church song we made up while we was cooking greens. We've been living that thing. Why? Because the Bible said he give his angels charge over us. It's time to make a decision. You heard the word of God. You heard that God wants to bring you in and he wants to keep you. He said, you heard the word that he got up and he ascended to heaven and he sent back the Holy Ghost and he wants to give it to you so that on that day, there's a day coming where he's going to tell his saints to come higher. There's a day coming. Do you have your ticket? God is wanting to give you your ticket today. He wants to stamp your, your, what do you call it, your passport book. He wants to make sure that when he call your name, there ain't no trouble at the crossroads. It's time. It's time. When we make the altar call, it's time. It's time. Listen, it, it, it's time to go beyond just being good. It's time to go beyond just being moral. It, it's time to go beyond just being nice. I, I do nice stuff. Hey, listen, this is going to shock everybody here. You know good people going to go to hell? What you mean, my, my, me being nice ain't, ain't good enough to get me into heaven? The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God. Listen, we got to do what God said. We got to take on his name. You ever go somewhere and they, and they say, well, who are you? He said, I, I'm with them. He's like, come on in. This is what God want to do. He want to say, come on in. He want to present us. On that day, he want to present us without spot, without wrinkle, or any, that, any such thing going to catch somebody. You, you can't get into heaven with your version of Jesus. It's, it's time. It's time to make a decision. It's time to come in. To the ark of safety. Now, I know you're watching the news. I know you're watching the news. Some of us are living the news. We're seeing things now that our grandparents never seen. You're seeing weather and things happen that never happened before. There were certain places across the country you knew you could go at certain times, and if you didn't want to deal with the snow, you could go here and, and just continue to enjoy the sun. Now, you liable to be anywhere. Snowstorm hit, fire when places ain't supposed to be, and right over it, you got a storm and floods, and they can't put none of that stuff out. Viruses and stuff coming out the woodwork, and the people are going haywire. Sometimes I turn on court TV and I watch people, and they look normal. But I can tell you with full confidence, they bread ain't done. Yeah. 
I don't even know the oven got turned on. They bread is not done. And God is letting us know. The Bible says in the last days, things are going to get worse. And what, they can march down the street and sing all kind of songs they want to sing. Pass all kind of legislations they want to pass. The Bible says, Nothing supersedes the word of God. The Bible said things are going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. They're selling assault rifles out there now that will blow your house down, level your whole neighborhood. They're getting worse and worse. Fights taking out place everywhere. You can't even trust your kids in the school system. It's getting worse and worse and worse. God's saying it's time. It's time. You've heard the word. You've heard the word Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Wednesday after convention after convention after convention after, after what do you call it, uh, the vacation Bible school. You've heard it sung in the song. God said it is. wasn't even sure how this was going to go, but God is sending out a SOA saying, I'm coming for you. Receive it because there'll be a day. There'll be a day. We was talking about this on the bus as I come to my close. I certainly hope God has got your attention. We was talking about this video. I don't know if anybody's seen it. It was called Left Behind. It wasn't the, the book series, but it was, I think it was called It Happened One Sunday Morning. And uh, they was all in church, and all of a sudden, people start disappearing right in the church. Now, we won't have to worry about that here, but in the video, even the pastor got left. Hey, now, why don't watch this? There's a lot of people that stand behind pulpits. They preach the word of God. They can teach you under the table. They can preach so they for a bag of french fries to come to the altar. But they life. See, Satan know the word. He know the word good. Matter of fact, while we watching Netflix, he reading the Bible. But he can't live right. He won't come under the blood. He won't honor God. Read the book, book of Genesis when he starts to talk to Eve. Everywhere before then, you see the, the term, Lord God, Lord God. But when Satan starts talking about God, he said, have God say it. Yeah, he's God, but I don't honor him as Lord. He's not my master. He won't recognize him. He won't let you recognize him. Anybody who has the spirit of God in them, they will recognize that Jesus is Lord. He has made everything for himself. He sustains everything by the power of his word. He is God. He's the one that lives in the unapproachable light. He is the one whose mind can't be measured. There's no IQ test that has a number big enough to understand how smart God is. There's nothing to measure his power. He is without equal. He is the uncaused, which means that if anything had caused him to come into existence, it would be greater than him. There's nothing bigger and greater than God. And if you decide to listen to Satan, think about this. He was in heaven in front of the raw power of God and still caught an attitude. How do you do that? So why listen to him? He blew it. He wants you to blow it. But as Peter was sent to Cornelia, so today I've been sent here to you to tell you it is time for you and your household to hear the word of God and be filled with the Holy Ghost. As, and speak in other tongues as the spirit of God give the utterance. You wouldn't call and order nothing off of Amazon and just allow them to send you the box. So why would you come and just get the box of holiness? 
without getting the package, which is Jesus Christ. Why? Hey, man, as you stand to your feet, it is time. We're going to make the altar call. We're going to leave it open. If you recognize, like Cornelius did, he realized something was wrong. 